my crafty loving friends. Welcome to Repurpose My Way. I'm Shelly. Today's project is, I thought, required a little bit of an explanation. Uh, I was on social media recently. I saw this pineapple shaped sunflower door hanger and my daughter loves pineapples. So I shared the pineapple door hanger with her just because I thought, hey, cute, really, really, you know, creative and pretty cute. Uh, come to find out other people saw it on social media <laughs> and thought it was really cute as well and wanted one. So I thought, what the heck? I'm gonna try and figure out how to make some. I'm not typically a person that copies what other people do if I can help it. Uh, if I get an idea from something somebody does, uh, I like to um, give them credit. Unfortunately, I had taken a picture of the picture and I have no idea where it is or who it came from originally or who did this or came up with this idea. So I can't really give them credit, but I do want to put it out there that I did not come up with this idea. I did on my own create the shape and come up with a different way to put on the backing. Um, and I don't really know how the person did in the picture, how that got put together. I only did it by um, uh, what I thought would go or work to put it together. So uh, we're gonna try it today and see if it's gonna work. So let's check out how I make this pineapple shaped sunflower door hanger for some festive fall decor to welcome your guests to your home. So here's what you're gonna need. Some plastic canvas, at least two pieces that are 14 wide by 13 tall. I bought this three pack. This is a pack of 32 sunflowers. They're three and a half inches around. And I'll put links down in the description for all of these. Uh, from Amazon. Some scissors, some wire ties, the smaller the better because the holes of the canvas are small, some yellowish colored paint, this is Sunflower by Folk Art, a sharpie or something to mark the canvas with, a glue gun, some ribbon to make a bow, and some greenery for the top. So I cut out this shape. I just rounded out the edges and flattened the top and the bottom. So the size that I came up with was 14 inches tall and 13 inches wide on this. So you will need two pieces, one whole piece and one partial piece of the plastic canvas. Now depending on the size of your sunflowers will depend on how many you're going to use on here. I used a whole package on this. So all 32 out of the package were used on this plastic canvas. So I'm just cutting out the shape and then I'm going to use my zip ties to fasten them down. It uh, doesn't matter the color because I will be painting the canvas so that if any pieces of the canvas poke out once we get this done you won't be able to, uh, to see the white. It will be the yellowish sunflower color from folk art. So those will be painted. Just snipping off those edges and making sure that everything is looking good. And then I'm going to brush on this sunflower color. Uh, that I have. This is the only yellow that I have, so that's why I use this one. But uh, if any of the flowers get bent, or if you can see inside underneath, at least it'll be yellow uh, while it's hanging. So these little sunflowers come with a little piece sticking out from their stem, and I'm just going to go through the whole package. I won't show you the whole thing, but I'm going to go through the whole package and snip those off so it's as flat as it possibly could be, so it will sit flat on that plastic canvas. I want it to have a good area that I glue up to attach so that it will stay attached. So I did the whole package that way. And now I'm going to lay them out all in a row. 
So there's four at the very bottom where it's smaller. And then as you go up the side, you'll have two that'll go up a little bit higher. So you're just gonna keep doing this, these rows like this all the way up. Now I have freezer paper underneath here. And when you glue it, the canvas has holes in it. So you're gonna wanna lift it up every so often because the glue will go down through and stick to the whatever you have underneath. So I just used freezer paper because I had it right handy. And I just lifted it every bit every once in a while so that it wouldn't permanently glue to the bottom. So I just attach those four and then the next two go up just a little bit up the sides. Now when it's done it will be rounded like that so I'm trying to make sure that I'm putting the sunflowers together enough so that they don't uh, come apart too too much to show the backing. That's why I painted it yellow. So you just use plenty of glue on this and just hold it on there and make sure that they stay securely. So while we're watching me put these rows on so that you can kind of get the hang of how I'm doing this, uh, I originally, when I started out to figure out the shape of this before I even started anything else, I took all of my sunflowers out of the package and laid them on the plastic canvas before I even cut it just to figure out how many I wanted across and up and uh, also the shape that I wanted it to be in. Obviously I used the picture that I had sent my daughter on social media uh, looking at that and trying to figure that out as well. Uh, going by the size of my sunflowers and uh, using the package this is what uh, these are the sizes that I came up with. So I hope that helps you understand how the process has worked. I uh, did it several times. I added the sunflowers, took them off, thought I had what I wanted, and put the sunflowers back on and reconfigured. It's almost like measure once, cut twice, or measure twice, cut once type of deal. So there we go. Now that we have them all down, I have some greenery that I got from... I believe Joann's uh, at a discount and I thought this what I had on hand was the best greenery to put in the back so without going out and trying to find something different. So I just pulled them off the stem because I wanted one to be up higher than the other to give it a center or a middle and I just tucked it in underneath the plastic canvas and then stuck a wire tie in through there and I'm going to wire tie them on so that they will stay securely. I'm also going to go ahead and put a, a bunch of glue on there once I get it set where I want it but to help keep it secure I want to use this wire tie. There we go, we got that on. We're going to snip that wire tie off. I got it as tight as I could. And then again, like I said, I'm going to stick in a whole bunch of glue, just pump it right in there. Uh, it's not going to go anywhere but in the backs of those flowers. And that'll just help them uh, stick a little bit better and not move around. We're going to flip that over and just fluff and fluff. Of course, it's all about the fluffing. So I cut a piece of this homespun material that I had. This is the black and tan. I wanted to cover up the backing. If this is going to be hanging on a window or a door, you'll be able to see it from the back. And I wanted to make sure uh, that it, you just didn't see all that plastic canvas. So I want it to look a little more finished. So I'm just laying, I just cut it down to the basic size and I'm laying it down and just going to cut out the shape a little bit better. You don't have to. I suppose you could keep it square uh, as long as you keep it short enough so you couldn't see it behind the, from behind the flowers, but I wanted it to go the shape of the plastic canvas. So I just glued it down so it was secure. 
There we go. And then I just trim it as I go along the best that I can. Of course, it doesn't have to be perfect. It will be the backing. But still, if you see it from through the window, I'd like it to look a little bit nicer. I'm not the best a bow maker and I really shouldn't be showing how I make them because I think I do it totally uh, backwards and I don't know as I do it right but they do come out okay so I don't know so anyway I leave a little bit of a tail and I make a loop the size that I want and sometimes I do different size loops uh, sometimes I do the same it all depends but after I do the first loop, I put it on there and then I twist. See how I twist right there? I give it a nice twist. And this is why the wired ribbon is so nice because you can manipulate it the way you want it to look. So you twist and then you bring up another loop for the other side and put it under my thumbs. That's the other reason is I have arthritis and my, my hands are so terrible holding all this stuff. Uh, so it sometimes comes loose. But anyway, I put it on and then I give it a good twist and then do another loop and then I do a twist. And so after each loop I do a twist and then there's a tail. And then I just cut that off. And I saved a uh, one of these zip ties off to the side. And I make sure I get all the loops and the ends in there and then just tighten that up. Of course you could use jute twine or or a little bit of wire, whatever you choose. Um, and then after that it's all manipulating the wired ribbon the way you want it. Twist it and turn it, fluff it, make those loops nice and fluffy. And I don't think my bows come out too too bad but I'm definitely not the greatest at it. So I probably should have waited to put this wired bow on, but I was excited to get this on there and see what it was going to look like. But I had to flip it back over to put the wires on to make it bend around, and I ended up squishing the bow. So I got it all fluffed up, and then I turned around and squished it but it's wired so it's okay. That's why I like using wired ribbon. This I just made uh, three loops on each side, different sizes, and just fluffed it up the way I like it. So here I flip it back over and I'm taking some floral wire and just wrapping it around the, I'm sticking it through the cloth and the plastic canvas holes and wrapping it around and I'm gonna do each corner right across the back. And once I get that done, what I'm going to do is pull it. As you can see, I'm pulling it so it rounds those edges. So as it sits on the door or on a wall or wherever you put it, it has a little bit of a rounded shape to it like a pineapple would have. So there we go. It's kind of rounded a little bit. And then I put a decided to put a hanger on the back. yet I've done a little twist on the second one that I made up. So I ordered enough from Amazon to do a second uh, door hanger. So I am taking my Spanish moss and going in between each of the sunflowers and letting, letting the moss just kind of stick out here and there and just look more rustic and more fall I believe. And I really like how this came out, and I'm glad to come up with a way to make this uh, my own little twist 
in the pineapple shaped sunflower door hanger. I hope you guys like it. Okay, so what do you think of my twist? Looks pretty cute, huh? I really like all the Spanish moss in between the flowers. I think it looks really cool and more rustic. So let me know down in the comments whether you like the rustic or the regular. Thanks for watching, have a great day. Oh, and if you're looking for more Halloween or fall decor, check out this video right here.